today. Steve's first day off. Yay, Steve. Day one. Day one for him. Starting off with some fence repairing. So do you remember that big tree that we took down and the storm took down a little bit too? Um, you might remember some of the saga that we posted. Well, when one of the huge branches came down, um, it wiped out this fence here too. So as you can see, the tree is now chopped up and that's going to be seasoned for firewood. We're seasoning the outside because we've learned recently that you can't season it inside. That's right, isn't it, Steve? So apparently you can, but it takes longer. So Stephen and Jack are working on the fence. Say hi, Jack. And they're going to get that repaired first thing. I've got loads to get done in the garden, um, in the veg plot, in the kitchen, all over. So we'll see how we get going. I've left them to it then. They're, um, they're going to get that fence fixed and get the garden looking a lot better because it looks with sawdust and shavings and everything all over the place at the moment. So try and get tidied up a little bit. I'm not sure where I'm going to start. I haven't planned this out very well, but it's a lot colder today. What a day yesterday was absolutely perfect first day for me. So I'm out obviously in the greenhouse and I think I'm going to start getting things just planted in planted into the polytunnel. I've got a load of beetroots and things like that ready and I haven't hardened these off. So they should be fine going straight into the polytunnel. And to be honest, it's not due to be that cold, frosty or anything. So I might even take the risk and just get some things straight outside. The brassicas that I've took so much time and care over, I am going to get those into the polytunnel, um, the cold frames though. Uh, so I'll do that. Planned on doing that the other day. And then as, as always happens with me, I got distracted by something else. So I think we'll get the plat we'll get the a polytunnel planted up get the stuff into the cold frames and i'll start giving myself getting my head in order as to what else i want to get done didn't get around to the dandelions yesterday i'm going to do that definitely do that while i'm off and hopefully today they're all still closed up tight um as you probably know dandelions close overnight um and open up when the sun comes out well not much sun today so we'll see we'll see what turns up if i can get them picked you need to make a dandelion tea first uh, before you make the syrup or the honey so we'll see how we get on but i'm definitely going to get started i need some of these plants out of the of here i've got a dripping tap um so that i can get others in so i want to get a load of seeds sowed things like that and i've got tomatoes to pot on and absolutely loads to do so i'm just gonna get on with it <laughs> slight change of plan i um i'm going to do the polytunnel in a shortly but yesterday when we emptied the um sheet pen from the barn the, the front pen that you saw um, that all had to go somewhere. Now, goat manure, you can put straight onto your veggies or onto your beds. Sheep manure, I don't think you can. But having said that, all I've done is put it around the fruit and the rhubarb and just hope that um, that it's going to be okay. I mean, we'll live and learn if, if, if it's not. It'll come back if it's not. It just might burn the roots for this year. Worst case scenario, but um, we, we don't have anywhere else that we can put it. And it also helps me um, not have to weed quite as much because the weeds were coming through thick and fast and we're just not going to have time to do everything. So this is what it looks like. Really thick, as you can see. I mean, not all of this is dirty, it's just bedding. Um, but yeah, it's really thick. Got in as far as I could uh, with the sheep bedding. It's not everywhere because you just can't get in without getting your eyes taken out. Oh, look, I've missed a raspberry cane there. That's a... Uh, they're getting everywhere so i've been taking those out and what i've actually got here are some that have still got the roots so i'm looking for somewhere to replant them i might have an idea I need to chat it through with stephen first and there's a couple there that i obviously need to get out and i've done exactly the same i'll shake this will shake off and rain off um hopefully it'll be okay i really hope it'll be okay and i've done the same around the gooseberry bushes so i did this last year i mean gooseberry bushes are really tough um they're starting to bud looking fantastic can you see that so yeah i've done it all the way haven't managed to get in the middle where the raspberry canes are coming through but that's okay we'll see we'll see how that works out and i'll show you now what grace has been doing this morning grace is going out you know like teenagers do um but before she always gets her jobs done and what she's done today is move some hens that were in a cage a greenhouse cage so it was a greenhouse frame that had mesh over it the one that was in the barn and we're trying to get the barn all organised and cleaned and tidied out and get all the birds outside where we can. So she's moved these into this caged area. This is just some of the pack joy that's gone to seed. But look, these guys are loving the new life in there. So they've got two waterers. They've knocked the feed over, but they've had the morning feed, so they don't need any more. And living in here, they're going to get so many fresh veggies.
finished tidying up where I've been working as best I can anyway because obviously it's um it's like the gravel storms here so everything goes in them and you can't like sweep after you've finished or anything so I'm going to show you what Stephen's up to so in the garage we've been raising our ducklings that we hatched ourselves so Aylesbury cross Pekins. I'm just going to get my top actually because I'll probably get cold now I've stopped um and we've also been raising our meat birds so they're the Ross Cobbs and I think we've got 16 meat birds this time and basically they've been in the garage because that's one of the safest places for them away from predators now they're getting to a reasonable size still chicks still babies but they're not titchy tiny um they're basically out growing the pen that they're in so Steve's making a new pen for them in the barn so all we've done with these is we've just doubled the size of the pen they had a board going across the middle there which the ducklings are in the right side and the chicks are in the left so we've just took the board out the middle screwed it the two of them together just to give them double the size but it won't take long for them to make this messy because they're the messiest animal in the world <laughs> they're still on the heat though as well two heat mats over there for them and that's steve's invention to try and uh it'll just up. create a pond for them to <laughs> swim in in the end no doubt but and we've just brought the chicks over from the garage into the barn and doubled the size of their pen as well. But we have a problem with rats in here. They've got our last ducklings from the barn. So all I've tried to make this is as rat proof as possible. It's got a concrete floor, everywhere's meshed. I've put a little board in here so the rats can't get down there. So hopefully they'll be as safe and as rat proof as it can be. We'll, only time will tell. We're on the back of the barn now and we've got some job for you to do that um, now we're on straw now we're on straw we need a separate muck heap we don't like to put straw and the shaving type bedding together because that, that shavings rots down super quick the straw doesn't take a long time so we're trying to keep that separate but Stephen hasn't had a chance yet to um to create a proper bay for them couldn't think what to call it then so unfortunately we've already started filling up where it's going to be so now he's struggling bless him to uh to be able to get in to actually secure it so we're going to make it as big as possible um we've got some other stuff here that we're going to end up needing to burn so we'll probably have another fire tonight that's become a saturday night tradition and um that's what we're working on now so i'm just going to give him a quick hand then i can get the straw piled back so we can actually start using the bear properly Another quick bodge done, flying through my list. I'm still in the car, obviously. I've just got back from um, getting some feed for the chickens. We did go yesterday, but it was actually closed. Um, it's only open eight till one today as well, obviously over Easter weekend. Anyway, 20 kilos of Lay's pellets is now 11 pound, well, a penny under 11 pound. That was nine pound 50 before all of the craziness started. And in fact, I'm sure it was £8.50 this time last year. So even if we go from £9.50 to £11, like significant increase. And the bag of mixed corn was also £10.99 there as well, which we don't normally get from um, our industrial estate. It is, it's kind of now we're paying for the convenience of getting it from just over the road, essentially. It's like a 10 minute drive. Um, we used to go to the country store, which is where Stephen works near. So when he's at work, that works out okay because he can go. But it's a 30 minute drive there and a 30 minute drive back, obviously. Um, and the diesel that I'll use to go and get them the feed now, it's it's just not worth it. I may as well pay the little bit extra. But I think even at the country store last week, they were £10.20 for 20 kilos. So oh, the dogs have seen me. So yeah, we're better off spending a few extra pennies, um, saving my time and saving the diesel uh, than, than going all the way to go and pick it up when nobody's over that way at the minute anyway. But yeah, costs are just flying up. We did sell those Brahmas last night though, so that's good. So we've we've used some of that money towards the feed, obviously. Um, and when we need extra pig feed and things like that, we'll be using that. So they went to a really good home. I was very pleased about that. Um, you know, because you never know when when people are coming, what what the setup's like. But they told us all about it, and it sounds fantastic. So pleased that they've gone. They took the cockerels as well. So we've only got the one Brahma cockerel now, and I think three or four hens, no four hens left. 
anyway so that's that i'm going to mix the feed um we've got a chest freezer an old chest freezer that's obviously not plugged in in the tack room and we just mix the feed in that take that take it out of the bags and mix it in so it's easy just to scoop it in the buckets then so i'm going to get that done um lots of other things to be getting on with so let's get cracking Incidentally, a little tip that I'm using, I'm keeping these bags. I mean, we've always kept them for rubbish outside, but I'm actually using them instead of um, black bags or bin bags in the house. So whenever I need something, we just come over here and that's why I try and keep them intact. So I just cut them off and tip the stuff out and just use them as bags instead. One, it's better from the, for the environment, so reusing them. And two, it's costing me less because as I keep harping on about the price of everything is going through the roof. So reusing feed bags for bin bags in the house. I've actually decided as well, I was supposed to be doing a roast beef dinner tonight. Um, we're going, it's Easter Sunday tomorrow and we're going over to families for lunch. So we'll be having a huge, I can't wait, a huge um, roast dinner tomorrow. And tonight, doing a roast dinner is really not going to fit in with everything. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of a variation. We've been having a fire on a Saturday, as I said, and having a drink around the fire and just chilling out after a hard week at work. But what I think I might do is roast the beef and get some roasties, roast potatoes pre-done so you can have roast, roast beef and potatoes, which, to be fair, is like the two best bits of the dinner anyway. <laughs> Uh, but no Yorkshire puddings or anything like that tonight. So I think I'm going to do that and have that round the fire actually. Um, so while Stephen's still out, because he's busy taking grace and being taxi, doing a few other jobs, odds and sods as well, I think I'm going to get that done. And I also want to make some uh, wild garlic and cheddar scones. So we've got lots of wild garlic that I planted myself so that I knew it was wild garlic. Um, but now I know how to forage for it. It's, uh, it's really easy, but we've also got some that we've, we've grown ourselves. So I'm going to do some wild garlic and cheddar scones and because we're using the electric range now instead of the Arga, um, trying to be sensible and make sure that I put everything in at once instead of doing things sporadically, which you can do with the Arga because it's always on. So I've never really had to think too much about that for the last few years. So I'm going to get the scones and the beef in at the same time, I think. And that's probably the best use of the electricity that I can think of. I could probably cook it over the fire down the bottom when we get going, but don't want to take the risk, it's too good of a piece of meat to waste if it goes wrong. So I'm going to go and get some wild garlic, double check the recipe and get on with that while Stephen is still out because we're going to both work in the veg pot this afternoon together. That smells divine. Looks like a cake, like a big well tart. Anyway, these are the scones. Wild garlic and dehydrated tomato, sun dried tomato. Oh my goodness, they're so, so. Oh, I'm saying they're so nice, I haven't eaten one yet. They look so good. Let's go with that. Absolutely piping hot, too hot to cook. Tried to steal a bit. I've got the full thing, so I'm just push it back together. Nobody will know. <laughs> I'm in the nursery, or, well, it was the nursery. It's not the nursery now, it's what we turned into our storeroom. And I'm just going through our potatoes that we harvested last year and some of we, we've got a few left but we haven't got many edible ones left that um size wise and i left a few purposefully to grow chits and i thought you know what i'm going to try i know you're supposed to buy from a, a, a certified seed supplier which i did for these so i guess i kind of already have um but the ones that have got some decent chits on them without meaning to i'm going to try planting those and have a little patch just for those kind of potatoes. I don't know, making it up as we go along. But I've got a load of shop bought ones that I'm going to also put in this afternoon down the bottom plot. So I'm going to get on with that now. But I'm going to take these with me whilst I think I'm more excited about these than I am about the shop bought ones. Is that really is that sad? Okay, but I've got all different kinds of colours. I've got the reds, the blues, the pinks, everything. So I'm just going to do a mixture. And I would love to be able to just every year. Um, I know a few people who already do it, but every year basically plant our own. Hello, Rodney. Plant our own. So let's see how we get on. I'm getting there with the last of these potatoes, but it's the worst bit for weeds. So I'm having to do a heck of a lot of weeding. And I've just been up to see Steve and say, these pigs are really really too hot they've got no shade and obviously it hasn't been a problem up to now so what i've done is i've soaked them you can see the patch there i'll give them a bit of a wallow and someone's enjoying it 
Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to get them some shade soon. Um, they're okay for now and they've got plenty of water and everything like that. But obviously when I'm working here, they like to tell me having a drink. So I'm going to crack on, get the rest of these spuds in. We're nearly there. Well, we're not. We'll get there. Well, I feel like it's taken me three days just in what I've done this afternoon. But those uh, potatoes are in all the way to the end. The fork is where the last one is, just to remind me. I'm going to go over them now and just rake them over. And then when they start coming through, I'll keep them um, mounded up, obviously, right until we get right past when the last frost will be, which is the end of May. Haven't got any popping through yet. They were literally only put in just the other day. So just trying to catch up with myself, really. So that's a good set. So we've got one, two, three, four rows. And I have no idea how many there are down there. A lot. Um, but yeah, looking good. So I'm going to get them raked over now. And this pig is digging somewhere. Found something tasty underneath, underneath the ground there. <laughs> Look at the state of you. Look at the state of you. I keep refilling the water, but they keep throwing it about and playing with it. So I'm leaving it for a bit. Someone's got the right idea. You got an itch. As you can hear in the background, Stephen in the veg plot. So he's got the hedge trimmer and he's tidying everything up in there for me, but he's just been to see me not too long ago. and said, stop working. Again, the hoover stopped working the other day. The motor's burnt out on that. It looks like the motor's burnt out on the hedge trimmer now, so he's had to go and replace it. It was £30 at Screwfix um, because we absolutely need to get those done while we're off. And he said that the other one couldn't be repaired. It was only a cheap one, but that's not the point. So, yeah, he's, he's in there with Jack. Jack's helping him, doing a grand job. Um, so when I go up, hopefully, all of the hedges are look nice and trimmed back and we'll be able to get down the pathways without getting it with the pathways were getting narrower <laughs> so it should all look good i'm looking forward to that and then i'll be able to get back in the beds tomorrow because i'm i just wanted to really get this done um i've got a little bit of space here that needs weeding but i want to get some other stuff in but i'm not worried about when that goes in and i've got lots more seeds i want the courgettes and squash and all those uh, cucumbers and things like that to be in now because they grow so quickly i've hung back off those this year which is not like me um but yeah it's coming up to the end of april and i'm like oh my goodness I need to get away I need to get going so i'm gonna get those in while we're off <laughs> well i've just pulled the black membrane back that's been on the path and it's done a fantastic job so you can see all of this was just weeds before and now there's you know a few things that are trying to poke through I've left this here just because I really want to keep down what's at the gate. Um, but it'll it's it's temporary. But all I'm worried about now is can you see the lines here? Let me show you the problem. Can you see? So that is a mouse hole or a rat hole. So if you remember, but last year we had problems with the seed potatoes being eaten. And I did remember about that as I was halfway through planting them. I'm going to have to figure something out there. We, we can't, I mean, all this hard work to then be eaten by dirty rats. That's what they are. Horrible things. Isn't going to, it's not going to wash with me this year. We need to do something pretty quick because um, they're obviously very active. That hall is very fresh. So I'll have a chat with Steve and see if he can help. But for now, anyway, guys, so Stephen is still working away. I can hear him finished with the hedge trimmer. And sounds like he's trying to mow down the nettles that are coming through in the orchard just because that ends up killing off the apple trees that we've got in there. So watch out because I'm going to be doing something with the nettles as well. And I'm not making soup again because we did and it was vile. <laughs> um, sounds like he's got the ladders out. Uh, but anyway, for now, I need to go pick up my daughter and we're going to have a fire and eat outside. I've done that roast beef. Um, I think I'm going to do the roast potatoes when I get back. But to be quite honest with you, it is so hot. I don't feel like cooking it at all. But we need to eat. I might just have a drink of wine instead. Right, thank you for watching and we'll be back very soon. perfect end to a perfect day. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Stop being weird. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was lovely. Perfect.